Hello, welcome back. I'm Noreen Burke, owner of Call Clutter Fairy Home Organizing, and this is my YouTube channel, The Crafty Organizer. Today I'm gonna tackle a little spot in my kitchen which used to be a ironing board cabinet. And I know a lot of you with older homes have this. Now, if you don't happen to have one of these cute little nooks in your kitchen, you can absolutely apply everything that I'm saying to a small side cabinet that you have. But let's get started. So this was intended to be a cabinet for a fold out ironing board. I'm in a 1940s bungalow and right off of the kitchen used to be the laundry room. Somewhere through numerous owners and tenants, they moved the washer and dryer out to the garage, but obviously this little built-in cabinet was just left behind. So someone had added shelves a long time ago and I've been using them as is but it's not functional. Uh, I have to put in extra little baskets to fit things. It doesn't look very pretty. So yes, I use it, but I have been on a big kick since we've been home for quarantine to take advantage of this time and redo some of the things that I'm not happy with visually and make them cuter. So that's what we're going to work on today. So the first thing I'm going to do is empty all of this out and then I'm going to show you how to add additional cleats. Now you can do this in your own cabinet or a little nook like this if you have one. And I'll link below because I have a technique for adding shelves without any tools. So please make sure you check out that video below. But I, for this purpose, will be actually adding the cleats in with a couple of little nails and you'll be amazed at how easy it is. So let me empty everything out. I was going to say, let's see how hard that is. That was easy. <laughs> All right. With my little Dollar Tree mallet, those came right out. So whoever did this before, just cut little tiny pieces of MDF and attached them in. This is very similar to what I'm going to be making, but I want them to be smaller. My spices are not heavy. This is fantastic uh, if you're doing something that's going to be weight bearing, if you're putting on heavy items like storage boxes, but my spices don't weigh anything. Uh, and this takes up a lot of space. So I'm going to be doing a much smaller piece in here to support the shelves that I'm making. Since I am a renter, I'm going to hold on to all of these by using a mallet and gently wiggling them out with a flathead screwdriver. I can easily tack these back in when it's time to move out. But now that it's a clean surface, I'm going to wipe it out and make sure that it's really clean. And I'm gonna line the inside because it's been spray painted. So clearly I've got some missing areas that don't have paint on it. I'm just gonna find a fun, pretty contact paper that I have. I'm using what I've got on hand. I will line it out and then I can start adding my shelves. This is the first square thing I've ever found in my house. Oh my gosh, it's totally square. I'm in shock. <laughs> okay, so I wanna kind of plan out what's going in here so that I know how many shelves I need. So. I'm going to keep my big bottles of oil and vinegars at the bottom because they're the heaviest and then keep my smaller things up above. So I'm going to quickly sort out my spices and put them into likes with likes, my savories, my sweets, my seldom use, my baking things. And that way I can figure out what I want on each shelf and then I'll know how many shelves I need. So let me plan that out. I cheated and just took a little bit of contact paper to cover up the spots where the wood was. Um, this way I can just easily take that off and it's good to go. The main focus is going to be back here. And again, as a renter, I don't want to start repainting because once I paint one thing, it needs to spill out into other areas and I don't want to do that. So now that I have this done, I am going to put, I know, I still love the buffalo check. I can't even help it. So I am going to put that along the back and I think it's going to look really cute. And then I found that I had some 
chalkboard contact paper that I got from the Dollar Tree quite some time ago. So I'm going to put that on the inset here and that way I can put little tiny hooks to hang my measuring spoons and my measuring cups. And I'm excited about doing that. All right, I got my strip cut. One of the things I love about using checkered paper when doing a project like this is you've already got grid lines, so it's really easy to make it straight. So now I'm gonna go ahead and attach it to the back. If you are a regular subscriber, you already know what I'm gonna use. Say it with me, spray mound, <laughs> so I'll be right back. It's my favorite adhesion. <laughs> I love this stuff. So I've already sprayed the inside and I just came in from outside from spraying the paper. Now I'm just gonna tack it on in here. The thing I like about the spray mount is it turns basically any paper into contact paper. So you can reposition it if you need to, which I love. But now I have cute background for my new spice cabinet with wrapping paper. In the garage, I had an old wooden easel that uh, was used for painting and one of the legs broke. So I kept the other pieces that were available from it. So it has a little groove on one side and then it has an out dent to it. I'm not sure why, but I saved these and I painted the three sides. So the end, and then the pieces that are showing. And that is what I'm going to use inside as my new supports. So it'll be white and blend in and look nice. And then I will have to adjust this later, but I've talked about making sure you're accommodating for changes of plans and for plan Bs. Well, when I went into the garage, I thought that I had some half inch by five inch wood slats. I didn't. I'd forgotten that I used those pieces when I did my uh, potting bench upcycle. So I didn't have any wood to do this. But a long time ago, I showed you how to make a storage cabinet for paper, and I made it out of foam core. This stuff is incredibly strong. So I am making this temporarily out of foam core. The paper holder that I had was holding reams of paper and they were 12 inches wide and they handled the weight beautifully. Actually, the only reason one of them died is because I had it in the sun and the sun heated up the glue gun and the glue gun portion failed. So I'm gonna make my shelves out of that. Now, because spices are, um, they sometimes leak and ooze, I'm going to take two. So my, Spice rack here is 12 inches wide and it's four inches deep. So I've already cut these slats to 12 by four. I'm going to take two pieces and put them together. I'm not even gonna bother gluing them or anything because what I'm gonna do with these two pieces now is completely wrap them with the contact paper. This will give another layer of security to them, but it'll also make it so that if anything comes on here, I can easily wipe it down and they're easy to put in and take out. So I'm gonna go ahead and cover these off frame. You don't need to see all of that. And then I'm going to start going one by one and placing these where I want them. And then we'll do the inside of the door. So it's coming along. I know you won't want to, but take the time if you're using wood and you're nailing it in to drill those pilot holes. If you don't know what a pilot hole is, it's a small hole that you drill in ahead of time so that the nail doesn't split the wood. If you just start putting a nail in, especially if it's inexpensive wood like pine, the wood will split immediately and then you'll lose a perfectly good bracket. So take the time, drill the hole first. Okay, so as soon as I got the shelves in, I decided to start styling it and do the chalkboard on the inside and it's all done. So let me show you. Okay. 
I think a lot of times organizing is half system and half visual. And this visual absolutely makes me happy. So I used a lot of the shelves that were made out of the foam core. And I think those are gonna be absolutely fine for the lightweight things, especially if they're in a bin like this, because the weight is being distributed all the way across. So here's what I did. These are drawer organizers that I already had. And I really liked these because they will connect together. They have that cute little lip so you can connect them together in a drawer. But when I was looking to organize this space when we moved in, as soon as I saw these, I thought they'd fit perfectly and they did. They're the perfect depth, they're the perfect um, width. So look at drawer organizers or other types of things when you're trying to fit into a small space. So I have my baking supplies at the top. We don't bake often, but it's all together now. My extra spices because I refill my cute little jars with these things. And I'm a very lazy cook, so I like pre-seasoned packets that I can just dump with. Now this little shelf is the one I wanted the most because it's something that makes me happy when I open it. So I wanted my little vintage salt and pepper shakers. We use toothpicks a lot. This is probably the heaviest thing, and this is just a little jar from the Dollar Tree with my bouillon cubes in it. But this jar is probably about a pound by itself. The salt and pepper shakers are heavy, and this is just a little foam core shelf. So once we're able to go back out, I would like to replace this. But for now, as you can see, I put the heavier things under, I put the heavier things so that the support is right there, but it does wiggle a little. So I'll keep an eye on that. Then I have the spice jars that I made, and I just refill these on a regular basis. And this visual just makes me happier than anything else. And then down here I have my larger jars and the only thing I did was put the contact paper that I covered this with down on the bottom so it stays nice and clean. Then the contact paper blackboard sheet that I got from the Dollar Tree was smaller than I expected. So unfortunately it doesn't go the full length from the top to the bottom, but that's okay. So I have my little measuring things here And the only thing I need to change, which I wasn't thinking about afterwards, are these two cup sizes don't close because I have the bins there. So I'll swap that out later, but these do fit right inside when you close it. So I'll either get some collapsibles here once we're able to go back out, or I will just wipe that off since it's just chalkboard and put something else there. But what do you think? I think this is a much better visual than what I had before. And since this is a wasted space, I'm not gonna be ironing with this vintage ironing board cabinet. Turning it into a spice cabinet is the perfect solution. But if you have a narrow cabinet near your stove or where you cook, this is a really easy way to customize storage for you without breaking the bank. So nothing changed, nothing, none of the spices changed, nothing at all except the way I'm accessing it. And the thing I wanna to convey to you guys the most is if something's making you happy in the way that it's displayed, you guys, that's really what most of this is about. Organizing is about you finding things and you syncing with the system that you have. Yes, it's really nice to have everything color-coded and done by equal sizes, but if you're a visual person, you really need to put together a system so that you can access your things based on what makes you happy and what resonates with you so that you're not spending time looking for things. So I make suggestions on putting likes with likes, but always follow your own system and your own heart and follow as many people as you can because you never know when one of their systems might inspire you. That's all I have for today. Let me know in the comments below what you think about this. Also, if you like these types of videos where I'm doing upcycles, DIY projects, crafts, and giving you organizing tips, please make sure to click that subscribe button. That tells YouTube that the content I am doing is exactly what you want, but it also helps you because it gets like videos directly to your recommendation box. I post every other day, at least until I get to start going back to work. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in two days. Bye.